My name is Benedikt Mersch, and today I will talk about our recent work on receding moving object segmentation in 3D LiDAR data using sparse 4D convolutions. Imagine a self-driving car that navigates in an unknown environment. We try to follow a planned path shown in red and sense the environment with a rotating 3D LiDAR scanner. For each rotation of the scanner, we obtain a 3D point cloud that represents our environment at that time. At this point in time, we might ask ourselves if our planned path is still safe and what other traffic participants do. For example, it is important to know if the car at the top yields to us or if the car next to us is just parked or currently moving and possibly interfering with our plan. This problem can be extended to all objects in the scene that could move and therefore influence our state estimation and planning pipeline. For example, the knowledge about dynamic objects is essential to remove them from a map representation, which can then be used for odometry estimation and obstacle avoidance. The task of moving object segmentation is to distinguish for each point if it belongs to a moving object or not. You can see some examples here and ask yourself, which of these objects are moving? But be aware, some of them might not even be movable like street signs or poles. You can already see that a single scan is not enough to reason about moving objects in a scene. This is why we have to look at sequential data, more precisely the last scans we perceived with our LiDAR scanner. We attach a timestamp to each point indicated by the color resulting in a 4D point cloud. But by just aggregating the past scans in the sensor frame, it is still challenging to identify moving objects as you can see here. This is caused by the ego motion of the vehicle that makes it very hard to identify motion of objects relative to it. Therefore, we first register the scans in a common coordinate frame using poses estimated from a SLAM system. After that, static objects are placed at the same location and moving objects will change the location over time. If you now look at this 4D point cloud, it is easier to spot the moving objects. For some objects, like the cyclist, one can even clearly see the color gradient. Our approach takes this registered 4D point load and predicts moving objects in the sequence. In this example, we correctly classify the cyclist behind us and the slowly moving car at the top to be moving, whereas the vehicle next to us is not. Our approach predicts moving object confidence scores for each scan in the sequence using spatiotemporal 4D convolutions. In contrast to most other approaches, we do not require to project the data into smaller dimensional representations like range images or bird's eye view maps. Instead, we directly predict moving objects in the sparse 4D space. We also do not use any additional information like semantics or intensity, which makes it easier to deploy the method if the sensor setup changes. Let us have a more detailed look into the architecture. On the left, you see the stream of perceived point clouds with the most recent scan at the bottom. The input scans are transformed into a common coordinate frame using previously estimated poses and are aggregated to a 4D point cloud. This 4D point cloud is expressed as a sparse tensor and passed through a sparse 4D CNN. In our paper, we use the Minkowski engine for sparse convolutions. The output will be a confidence score for each point, indicating if it is moving or not. The dash window is the receding horizon of the N scans we currently process. In the next timestamp, it is shifted by 1 along the temporal axis, resulting in our receding horizon strategy. This strategy allows to refine predictions when new measurements are available. The black dots in this image represent the confidence predictions over time. We compare a non-overlapping prediction strategy at the top with the receding horizon strategy below in blue. For example, after predicting moving object confidence scores for the first five scans, and shifting the temporal window by 1, we can already refine the previous prediction for the scan at time 2. To do this, we implemented a binary base filter that recursively updates the log odds of each point to be moving. In our experimental evaluation, we first demonstrate how our model works when being deployed in a different environment using the same sensor model but mounted on a different car. We train on the Semantic Kitty data and evaluate on the Apollo dataset. Our method works out of the box with a moving IOU of 73.1% and can even outperform LMNet, which uses domain adaptation by training on data of the target domain. Next, we evaluated our approach on the LiDAR MOS benchmark. This resulted in a moving IOU of 65.2% and 
outperforming existing baselines at that time. After submission, we additionally added labeled training data from Kitty Road sequences and could even outperform recently published state-of-the-art methods that also use additional training data or even semantic information. In contrast to existing methods, we directly predict moving objects in, for, in the 4D space and do not require any projection. This avoids the commonly known label bleeding as seen on the left. This occurs because the points are close in the range image space, whereas the separation is clearly visible in 3D. You can see our approach working in action. We can predict moving objects of any size, like cars, cyclists and pedestrians, independent from the direction of motion. Our method also performs well on highway scenarios with faster moving cars. To summarize, we proposed a method to segment moving objects in 4D space using sparse convolutions. We only consider if a voxel is occupied or not, which makes it easier to deploy the method in new environments with differently mounted or calibrated sensors. Using our receding horizon strategy with a binary base filter, we can update our predictions online when new information is available. Please have a look at the paper and the open source code by scanning the QR codes. Thank you.